This is part two big ideas from educational psychology. We're going to look at learning theories, and I have the idea that I'll need to break this into two parts. So we'll start with cognitive learning theory, and again, I'm just touching on the basics. Learning from this perspective, this theory is primarily a change in thinking that's caused by new information or experience. So learning is acquiring new information or organizing information that is in our heads. It's adding strands to our cognitive web. We take in information in this thing called learning. We encode it, which means putting it in the right box, metaphor, and putting the box in the right place in our storage locker, metaphor for short-term memory, so that we are able to uh, retrieve it, going in, and use it. So learning is the ability to use knowledge. It must be meaningful if we're able to use it. That means it must be connected to something. When we put that storage box in the locker, it's in the right place so we know where to get it. Piaget says learning involves disequilibrium. There's an unbalance. This is equilibrium. Disequilibrium meaning, oh, I want to find out. I'm curious. Oh, it, the world doesn't seem right. So we have this disequilibrium, this cognitive dissonance, uh, difference between what you know and what you are experiencing. We, uh, we deal with disequilibrium by assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation means taking in new information, putting it in the right schema or file folder in your head. That's adding to information. Sometimes the new information is brand new or it conflicts with old information. Then we use what's called accommodation. That means creating a new file folder or reorganizing the file folder. This then creates di uh, equilibrium once again, and the cycle of learning continues. We create disequilibrium, assimilation, accommodation, equilibrium, disequilibrium. So a good teacher arouses curiosity, creates this disequilibrium, so students naturally want to find out, accommodate, assimilate, and get right to there. And we use the information processing model to describe learning in the, in the cognitive learning theory. And here are some terms. You can stop here that you should know related to this. And, of course, be familiar with Piaget. He not only talks about cognitive development, but this teaching and learning uh, process. And I'm going to cover behaviorist theory as well. Just a short overview. Learning, according to behaviorists, is a change in behavior. It only occurs, we only look at external behaviors. That occurs as a result of experience. Certain behaviors are rewarded or punished. And learning is a relatively permanent change in behavior. So learning, according to this view, is something that is done to the organism. We look at antecedents, behaviors, and consequences. We can control behavior by controlling or manipulating the antecedent, what comes before the behavior, or the consequences, what comes after the behavior. We can uh, manipulate all behaviors. Here are some terms, and these are rather, uh, takes kind of a lot of explaining and understanding. I would encourage you to go back and read in the textbook or wherever, and here are four major names associated with behavioral learning theory. 